I'm here with Joe Marshall, who we worked with on the Heist Award winning UEA flagship website. Hey, Joe. Hi, how you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. How are you? Not bad at all. Busy as always. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. So, um, thanks for joining me today, Joe. Uh, I've got a few questions to ask you, um, but before we get into those questions, I wondered if you could tell us a little bit about yourself, what's your background, what are you doing now, and how did you begin working with UEA? Uh, so my background for the last uh, oh, 25 years has been with the big IS integrators uh, doing sort of enterprise software delivery. Uh, I joined UEA uh, having moved to Norfolk uh, and wanted to work locally and heard it was a great place to work with great people, which, which was the case. Um, and the website project came up um, and I, they successfully asked me to help them out. So. Cool. Cool. And um, we, so we obviously worked together on that redesign of the UEA flagship website. Um, I'm interested in your thoughts, Joe, on what was your experience in working with Smile on the project? Yeah, um, it was a difficult brief. Uh, the brief was, we don't know what we want, but we don't want it to look like a university website. Um, uh, and we'll know good when we see it. So that's not an easy brief. Um, and I just think the enthusiasm and the creativity that you brought to it, the presentations, the adaptability, uh, the flexibility and the resilience, because it was quite a long call, um, just made you, yourselves a, a great team to work with. You knew the HE sector and you had bright ideas that the stakeholders liked, you know, and were willing to adapt and refine. So it, it was a pleasure to work with you all. No, oh, thanks, Joe. Were there um, were there any unexpected benefits of working with Smile? I think um, I, I think they found you more thinking out of the box than they would have expected uh, from people from the HE sector. The HE sector has a certain style, um, and I think. I think the unexpected benefit was we made lots of people happy and it was a difficult community to please really um, and it is very difficult to get design right that a lot of people can live with. Uh, there's a thousand opinions <laughs> um, and 6,000 people want to express them so you know it's a difficult one. Um, and, I, you know, and I, I just think it was the ability for you to be able to talk to a wide range of stakeholders uh, and just be confident to let let you rip with them, really, uh, and engage across the campus rather than it being a back office design agency that was sort of kept out of sight, out of mind. It was, you know, it was you're know, part of the team rather than a supplier, which was great. Cool. And uh, obviously this was a competitive tender process to, to get to the project starting block. At that tender process, did you have any reservations about Smile? And did we, did we manage to change your mind on any of those? <laughs> um, so I did, being a cynical IT procurer, uh, having gone to your website and found it quite minimalist, trying to work around case studies I, I kind of got it so there's a lot of unknown quantities um, but that because I'm a cautious IT person you know, like everyone I would quite like known quantities um, and taking the risk however you know the pitches and the presentations you made you know it was a compelling case and, you know, it was a very confident selection cool thanks um also, you know, we've we've made great strides with our website since those days as well, Joe, and you'll be pleased to know that we've now got more than one page on our website. <laughs> I wasn't going to be that, that damning of you, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was what's behind the page. It, okay, uh, yeah, uh, cool. Um, uh, and it was a great pitch that you did as well, you know, it really yeah. stood out. Thank um, you. As you're obviously intended it to. 
It's always the aim. Always the aim. <laughs> the the project itself, it was um, quite a big multi vendor chain. Yeah. And uh, multi vendor chains you know, aren't, aren't without their challenges. Uh, I'm really interested in your perspective, Joe, on what were the challenges that you had to overcome in that scenario? Uh, I think fortunately I was used to it uh, from my previous companies with lots of different moving parts. Um, it was very much a tripartite uh, delivery team, uh, UEA's own people, the platform specialists and the design company um, uh, and copywriting. Uh, I think it was about keeping that moving together, but I think the sort of agile cyclical approach worked well. We didn't try and bite off more than we could chew. We tried to approve as we go and mostly stick to it. Um, I think one of the biggest difficulties is uh, was design that worked well and easily with the technology. Um, so you know some great design ideas that just couldn't be done but would have liked to be able to do them or would take too long or cost too much or be too unmaintainable so i think that was always the challenge was the compromises we we hated letting go of some really nice things um because we just couldn't have them you know but uh, and I think there's a, you know, and also with the UX being driven separately as well, um, and, and the user journeys, it, it was a, quite a lot of handoffs between the teams. Um, but then I think the tool set that everybody put on the table and worked around kind of kept it under control. Yeah, yeah, there was a, like you said, there were a lot of handoffs, lots of collaboration and lots of meat in different teams but like you say i think the 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 tool chain if you like was was really um it kept that project moving forwards all the time definitely definitely so the uh the scale of the project as well i mean like any any flagship website is pretty big um uea's felt particularly big and i know that the design system that smile ended up uh, providing was was extensive uh, and you've touched on there about having to deal with all of these different stakeholders from all over the university one of the big things with any project like this i guess is managing expectations how how do you as a project manager manage so many different expectations at the scale of of that project uh, I operate a pyramid system, so I have my key bullet points for the very senior stakeholders, you know, that project tracking. Uh, we had open forums nearly every month where all the web editors and stakeholders were invited into a lecture theatre for a show and tell um, and talking about the roadmap. Um, I also had uh, a regular email that went out um, with a website update since every department was involved in it to some extent uh, and I regularly had to cull it to keep it under the limit of 500 people so it was really very much about the multi-layer channels but also being focusing on who the decision makers are um, and how to collect a lot of opinions allow deciders to decide and then play that back with an explanation as to why that decision's been made. Um, so yeah, I, I think half my time was stakeholder management. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but fortunately, they're all great people. And when they started seeing some of the designs, particularly because obviously the technology doesn't interest them. Uh, yeah. It was, what's it going to look like? You could see people palpably relax. You know, and got some great feedback about how clean it looked and how it leapt forward 20 years in its look and feel. Um, uh, and it wasn't just the flagship website, it was the internal portal and how that worked. Mm. And so 100 research microsites had to be dealt with. You know, I, I appreciate a lot of your focus around the flagship, but you, you did also help us out with those other bits. So, uh, yeah, yeah. a lot of moving parts. Um, and people voted with their feet. 
you know, when we migrated to microsites, more than three quarters of them opted to come into the main website, into a groups and centers <laughs> section rather than keep their own microsite. Oh, right. um, and we're really pleased with how their new site looked. So, yeah. you, you know, people really did vote with their feet. Oh, that's nice. That's cool. Yeah, it, it, it always amazes me how just the moment you put that, that visual in front of somebody that the conversation completely changes, they open up, they start offering opinions. It's um, it, the, the, the power of design in, in that respect is, is massive. Yeah, but, it's that tangible, you know, something to discuss rather than a theoretical content user journey, <laughs> ownership, you know, people worried about what would be done to their content. Yeah, um, and the cultural change from no, you can't have a thousand words on your school page. We want you to have two hundred and fifty. Mm. <laughs> you know, and all the contextual content and all of these difficult concepts that we had to get to grapple with and think in a very different way. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it, yeah. It was a a, a journey. Let's, let's call it that. <laughs> well, the journey. Well, one, uh, you know, I. I personally felt like I learned such a lot from working with you in particular, Joe. Um, and one of my favorite concepts that you uh, introduced me to was the big red button. Mm -hmm. uh, I wondered if you wouldn't mind just sharing a little bit about the big red button. So what I've learned over a long time in projects is sometimes people uh, have too much fear of the hierarchy and feel that if they have a very strong opinion uh, it won't be listened to so they don't voice it or sometimes they don't present it in the right way or they're just really anxious about something but they can't articulate what they're worried about they just know that it's there's an iceberg ahead and they feel the tank is just heading for it so what i kind of offer is to say to anybody on the project team can press the big red button and that is a screaming shout of stop there's something that's got to be discussed and what you promise as a project manager is if you press the red button we'll work out who who needs to get round understand what the problem is and find a way through it and it's to get rid of that sort of six months later well i, I knew that would happen um, and i kind of put it in an email nobody listened to me so it's kind of if you're really sure there's a huge problem you've got to shout stop and it might take five minutes to solve or it might be far more fundamental uh, and it's it's a, a demo you know it's a egalitarian red button anybody can press it and it was pressed on the project <laughs> uh, at least it, three or four times but it, 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 it works though as well and it, it's one of the kind of um, one of the smoothest projects in terms of the, the, the running of it and stuff like that. And, and I contribute that down to exactly what you've just talked about there and, and how the, the the big red button works and stuff. And yeah, it was, I, I, like I say, I, I learned a lot from you during that project. So um, thank you for that. No, it's, um, it's good. And it's about respect and constraints. You know, if people feel... Um, they can influence uh, and have their say and intervene when it's important it actually allows them to move forward because you know it's about assumptive progress nobody's yeah. pressing the red button so i can go ahead with it um, rather than can we have another 15 committee meetings to discuss it for six months <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, totally, I hear that. It's, no, let's just get this done, let's just do it. When people can see it, if somebody's upset, they'll shout. Yeah. Uh, and it is just about keeping things moving. So many of these things just get swamped down, analysis paralysis, and catastrophizing, and all of these things. Yeah. So with the, with the project, Joe, um, what successes from that project are you most proud of? And is there anything that if you had a chance, you know, if you had a do over, uh, are there any changes that you would make? Uh, I would probably have done some of the stakeholder engagements slightly different, uh, only because I know them all now. 
uh, I was new to UEA when I started um, and I'd sort of find and feel my way through it um, and some of that could potentially have been streamlined. Um, I think uh, the success was actually getting to the end of it, uh, 26,000 pages on the old website portal. 56,000 downloadable PDFs and telling everybody we want about 10% of that is a difficult ask. And we got really, really close, you know. Um, I think rolling out a course catalogue that worked differently to the traditional one with user testing was a great success. Uh, I think we tested the right things and had evidence. So a lot of what we did was evidence-based. And we're now doing A-B testing and uh, uh, using Google Analytics to continue to refine it. Uh, and I think that is a success, is having something that can evolve rather than something that's just been built and then won't be seen again for five years when it somebody says that looks old and let's do it all again. So, yeah. you know, watching the, the ongoing evolution of it, I think it being possible to evolve it I think it's a great success. It's yeah, not a no, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's a great way of putting it. And and you know, as you know, just even from our pitch, there's definitely something that we really b believe in. You know, websites never being finished and always evolving. So it's really nice to hear that that UEA now feels empowered to be able to do that. It's really nice. Yeah, I mean, the main challenge is you know we're, we're moving on to is mostly on the technical side. You know, nobody sat there going, we want it to look different or feel different. It's about sort of fresh content. It's about flexibility. It's about overcoming some of the technical debt. Um, it, you know, but it's, it's been there and it's supported us now through a whole year's sales cycle. Perfect. Um, and they're learning from, from that sales cycle and looking how to adapt it for next year. Awesome. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Joe. Thanks for joining me today. Really appreciate it. Absolute pleasure. Um, keep in touch. See you, Joe. Well, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you found that useful. Uh, if you did, please consider subscribing and see you soon.